So we seem to get a good response last week with the return of the Triple Threat video series. So I'm back again on Sunday for another edition. And this week's topics, I'm going to be talking about the Royal Rumble match and how it's for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and my thoughts on it. I'm going to talk about John Cena's newest injury and how that could potentially affect the WWE or not. And then I'm going to talk about TNA and their debut on Pop TV. Three topics, hopefully three minutes or less. Let's get started. I think it was really, really interesting that the WWE decided to put the belt on the line at the 2016 Royal Rumble in the Royal Rumble match itself. You know, and part of this almost makes sense from a storyline standpoint because Roman Reigns is already overcoming any and all obstacles that are put in front of him. What the hell else does he have? Now, to be fair, maybe that makes sense now when you tie it together because he's overcome all this other stuff. What's the only way to stop him from being the champion anymore is to have him defend the belt at the Royal Rumble, especially if they had him enter in at, like, number one or number two. Um, now, some of you, I think, were surprised by this revelation. Some of you did not like this decision, and, and I really don't understand why. Now, if you've been following this channel, you know for a few months now, I've been advocating for this company to have waited instead of when Seth Rollins got injured immediately trying to crown a new champion. I was a huge fan of them waiting until the Royal Rumble, having that belt stay vacant, and having that 30-man Rumble match before the world title. I thought it was good timing. I thought it would be well-placed. Especially because when you look at it, the Royal Rumble match is important and significant in its own way, and that is an important and significant show. How much more important and significant is it when you've got the belt on the line? Because it's something that doesn't happen every day. It's only happened once, and that was 1992, and we still talk about how great that Rumble match was 24 years later. So why not have the belt on the freaking line here? As much as we complain about the company being stale and dull and repetitive, in the presentation, here's something different. And here's a chance to be creative and get the belt off of Reigns. Or here's a chance to really build up Reigns. It was a lot of different things. By having the belt defended at the Royal Rumble match itself, it opens up the avenue for more possibilities for the WWE, what they can do on the road to WrestleMania and at WrestleMania itself with that world title. Because think about it now, if you have somebody new win the belt at Mania... You know, you could either sit there and have Reigns get his rematch at Fastlane, or you can have him get his rematch at freaking WrestleMania. You could sit there and have, you know, Roman Reigns face off against Triple H at Fastlane and have Roman Reigns' rematch for the belt at WrestleMania on the line, putting some really big stakes uh, on that show. So instead of that just being a Fastlane show that's just the bridge of filler, no killer between the Rumble and WrestleMania. Now, not only are you giving the Rumble show some extra significance, you could do it with Fastlane and also WrestleMania as well. You know, again, why not? What the hell does the WWE have to lose here? Because based off of the way they had kind of booked it and where they had put themselves, they had really boxed themselves into the corner. Frankly, I think this is the only viable alternative or option that they had. So on the heels of that major announcement about the Royal Rumble match being for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, you got some bigger news a little bit later in the week, and that was the announcement that John Cena had an injured shoulder, and he's going to have surgery. He had surgery already, and he's going to be on the shelf for a period of time. It sounds like up to six months. So now for a company that's already without Seth Rollins, already without Randy Orton, now you could throw a John Cena into the mix as guys that aren't going to be available to the company at their biggest show of the year at a really, really important show, WrestleMania 32, AT&T Stadium, when they're trying to put over 100,000 asses in the seats. And you know deep down Vince is trying to set an indoor attendance record in the U.S. You know that's what he's trying to do. So now the guy that this company has counted on for so many years isn't there. <clears throat> He's not going to be wrestling at WrestleMania 32. And now people are, uh, that already were thinking that the show was looking like it was gonna, wasn't was going to be very good, now one of the bedrocks of the WWE for the past decade isn't going to be involved, and you're like, what the hell does this mean? How bad is this show going to be? You know, frankly, I don't, I don't celebrate, I guess, when guys get hurt, but I'm not exactly sad about this injury. 
you know, it, it's one of those things where Cena's gone for an extended period of time. Okay. Then that way when he comes back, it, it, it's actually nice to see him as opposed to the dread of seeing him every week when he's force fed down your throat. But to me, Cena's always been a prop. And he's just been a prop, a plot, a device for the WWE uh, to make a certain amount of money and that's it. He's always been a crutch for them, a safety device for them. You know, now that they don't have him for several months, now they have to go on as if he's not there because he won't be there. And as a result, it forces the WWE, you would hope, you would think, to put more effort into doing other things to making the show better overall. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know, that's an ideal world that it would, but it most certainly doesn't mean that it would. But it's not like the shows are great when Cena's on them any freaking ways. A lot of these pay-per-views stink when Cena's on them anyways. I mean, to me, if anything else, that period of time that John Cena's gone should, if anything, expose just how overvalued he is by the WWE and how much his importance is to the WWE is overrated by the wrestling media and the wrestling fan base. I really don't think it's that big of a deal. And you know why? Because it's not. You know, the only thing you could sit there and say is if they were going to do Cena versus Taker at WrestleMania 32, yeah, that's a pretty big deal. I'll give you that. But they hadn't even really begun to go in that direction. And they could go there again someday down the road. We don't even know for sure that they were going there. That was just thought. That was just rumor. That was just innu innuendo possibility. You know, they hadn't even set the wheels in motion. You know, Cena's gone. Sucks for him. Frankly, I think it's a good thing for the WWE. It's not even just from a Cena-hating standpoint. It's just from a fact that now he's gone for several months. That's the reality for WWE. Fucking move on and do something uh, to make the product better without him. So I did something really crazy this past week. I didn't think I would do it ever again, frankly, because it had been a while. But I said, you know what? I had the night off of work. Um, I actually get Pop TV as part of my basic cable package. What the hell? Why don't I sit down and watch Impact Wrestling on their debut show on Pop TV and see what I think, see what happens. See if there's anything to fuss about. And, you know, I watched the show, and I was disappointed. I wasn't mad at the show. I wasn't angry at the show. I didn't think the show sucked in the sense of raging mad about it. You remember when I used to rage about things pertaining to impact? You know how I can rage about things. It was nothing like that at all. I just sat there and watched impact, and I was like, eh. You know, this is a chance to start off strong on a new network, you know, establish some type of identity in a new year, uh, sweep the, the bad, the stink of Destination America off of you, and that's the show you give us. The wrestling on the show was average at best. The segments were average at best. Um, the characters were average at best. I mean, you know, the whole thing of the hook of you know, crowning the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. That's a good way to kick off things. But you knew all along, I thought it was so incredibly obviously telegraphed, that it was going to be not Jeff Hardy uh, versus Ethan Carter III in the finals. And you figured Ethan Carter III was going to win. And it's just kind of like, eh. You know, it just basically is saying that all the crap you had happened and Bound for Glory was one big waste of time. You know, and you're sitting there and you're kicking off the show with Dixie Carter you know, yeah, you had the returns of James Storm and also Kong, and you had the debut of the Miracle Mike Bennett, which I thought was cool, and I like that. I think it's a good fit for TNA at this time. I just sat there and was really disappointed because, you know, I'm like, I would think if you're TNA, you're trying to push the envelope. You're trying to do something. You're trying to establish some type of identity. You're trying to do something to move the needle. And it felt like they really didn't try. I felt like I was watching a phoned-in, mailed-in WWE Raw. It was an hour less in time, but with crappier characters, crappier in-ring action, and just as mediocre to bad talking and other types of segments. 
If I want to watch crappy WWE, I'll watch crappy WWE. I want to see TNA be something different. I wanted to see TNA be something, period. The worst thing of all that I could say about Impact Wrestling this past week on Pop TV was that it left me with no real impression at all when it comes to the product, and that's the worst type of impression you can make. The only impression that I actually got about the brand or about the show itself was pertaining to its relationship with the network Pop TV and me thinking that Impact Wrestling is nothing more than a freaking device for Pop TV to get over its own crap like Shit's Creek and get over the network by having the fans hold up Pop TV crap and having the commentators throughout the night plug other crap that's coming up on Pop TV. It was very reminiscent to ECW on TNN back in 1999 and 2000, for Christ's sakes. Now, will I watch Impact Wrestling again this upcoming week or going forward? I don't know. But you have months to plan for this, and that's the best that they fucking came up with. I mean, I would have rather seen TNA Impact Wrestling, that show, try some crazy shit, do some off-the-wall stuff, and have it not work, and at least have it be like, well, they're trying to do something. They're trying to establish some type of identity. They're trying to go outside of the box. They're trying to rattle the cages. They were trying to do something. But it just didn't feel like TNA was trying at all. It feels like that company, based off of what I saw this past week, has kind of mailed it in. And they're just kind of hanging around because it's cool to kind of hang around and they don't know what else to do with their lives. If you're not going to try, then don't even bother anymore. Well, I, I guess so much for the three minutes on each time, or less on each topic. But hey, there's the triple threat for this week. Let me know what your thoughts are on the WWE World Heavyweight Championship being defended in the Royal Rumble match at the Royal Rumble. What do you think John Cena's injury means for the WWE, especially come when it comes to WrestleMania 32? Is it a big deal? Or do you think it's a whole lot of fuss about not a lot at this point? And would it really made a difference whether he's at that show or not? Because if you already thought the show wasn't going to be good and Cena was going to be there, then what difference does it frankly make? And then if you actually watched Impact Wrestling this past week on Pop TV, do you think I'm right that it was kind of a phoned-in effort by TNA and that you expected them to do something, at least something? Or do you think I'm overreacting a little bit? Let me know all your thoughts on this in the comments section down below. I'll see you later.